All right, welcome to No Better Time. I'm Phil Salter, and I'm here, I'm so happy to say, with someone I'm proud to call family, my cousin, Samson Klein, the owner of the company All Four Walls and a true entrepreneur, someone that I'm excited to learn more from, someone I love speaking with whenever we get a chance to spend time together. Welcome, Samson. Thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah. I just want to kind of hear your story about the business you've built and kind of things you've learned. And if you want to just jump into it, sure. Anything you want to talk about? I run a company, All Four Walls. We specialize in drywall repair. So my company just does small drywall jobs, really small jobs. And um, I guess we'll talk about that more in a sec. But how I started is, and, and really this can go for any business, whoever is listening here. If you have an idea, any idea you have, you can expand it into something beautiful just like this stupid tiny repairs we do and we we service we we support six people now we have six people on our payroll from stupid little jobs here's how i started and here's how you can take your idea and turn it into something beautiful so you have a full-time job right now whatever it is whoever you're listening you know you, whoever's listening whatever your job is keep that full-time job you work nine to five seven to twelve whatever the, who cares what the hours are your next, so this is what I did. I worked for a construction company and just doing, I think I was a laborer, just doing stupid stuff. And what, and I, I luckily got off at 5 p.m. And I, I understand that's a little bit of a blessing to get off like that. But once I was done at five, I worked from like 5.30 to six because I'd come home, shower, eat. And I'd work till eight, nine, ten every day, five days a week. I always took Saturday, Sundays off generally. Um, so I started this side hustle. I had my main job to pay my bills, pay my living expenses and things like that, because obviously you can't just quit your job. That's silly. So, and then I did my side hustle and I did that for six months, eight months. And I, pr I pr the most important thing with a side hustle is you have to proof of concept, whatever you're doing, because if I just quit my job today and s potentially start my side hustle, probably I'm going to fail. Because most of your ideas may not work all the way or may need lots of time. So I worked my, my nine to five. I'd come home, do my side job, which I personally just myself, it was just me after work doing small repairs. And so I'd make two or 300 uh, a day doing small repairs. And I was making 15 bucks an hour on the side job. So I was making more in three or four hours than I was all day. But the problem was it wasn't full-time work. I, at that moment, I didn't have five days a week consistent. So if I were to quit, I would have failed because I probably only would have gotten two days of work until I built the pipeline up. So that's how All Four Walls started is I worked for a construction company. I had this idea about drywall repair. And I'll pause a minute there. So the I, why I had the idea of drywall repair is because I looked at the market and I didn't see any competition. There, there's not one in Utah. There is not one single large company that does drywall repair. There's a million handymen, but in my head, handymen are not competition because they do a little bit of everything. So by hyper specializing in drywall repair, um, we're like a master. Like if you need a nose job, you're not going to go see your family practice. You're going to go to a nose job guy. Same thing with anything. So there's not really a company that did that. So I saw a, a need in the market and I, I grew on that. Now it now here there's no there's no competition. But that doesn't mean if you enter a market with competition, you you can't expand and grow. So I had my nine to five, proof of concept six to nine months. Once I finally was able to quit, the proof of concept was there, I quit my job. Well, let me back up just a little bit. Your nine to five pays all your bills. So you can't, that money has to be used for your house, for your food, for your girlfriend, whatever, kids. Your side money cannot be used for credit card, cannot be used for going out to eat, buying that new watch, buying shoes. A hundred percent of that has to be put back into the business. New tools, new advertisement, new vehicle, wrapping the vehicle, uh, uniforms, a hundred percent of that. Don't just treat that money like, oh, I got a stimulus check. I can go out to eat. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part. I call them little baby assets, whatever it is. You make soap. 
right? That's your side hustle. You make soap. When you get a customer that buys $100 worth of soap, you take that $100 and buy a new mold, a little mm -hmm. better mold. Then you, your next sale, you buy a little better mold. Or I don't know much about soap. But that's the most important part. So this proof of concept, the six to nine months was free money, technically, because I had my nine to five and I just worked a couple extra hours. And I took all of that and would buy better tools, better advertisement, better, better, better. And then I quit my job. So I didn't have that luxury of all my bills are paid because my nine to five. So then my, my, my side hustle, which is now my whole thing, had to support everything. I had to protect that bunch of money that keep, kept putting into the business because you have to keep putting money into the business. And then I had to pay all our bills. So that's why you want that six to nine months or even longer to prove that the pipeline stays full, whether it's a service like us or a product you sell that keeps getting sold so you don't die like financially. Yeah, so it's interesting because it seems like there's a couple values to that of giving it some time because you're proving the concept, but you're also, like you said, building a pipeline. Like there was a certain point where you said, oh, this could be successful, but I need it to be bigger than it is in order to you know, completely cover all my expenses and my needs and be a full-time thing. Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably this time, I imagine, where you're like, wow, I am so slammed on both sides, but if I don't completely commit to this side hustle and make it my full time thing, I can't make it any bigger. Was that kind of a hard, was there a moment where you're like, I need to make it my full thing or I can't make it any bigger? Exactly. Makes totally. It, the, the moment that that happens, that you're crazy busy over here and crazy busy with your regular, it, that's when you need to start thinking the switch over. And that switch over it was the scariest thing financially in my mm. entire life. That, that parachute of a paycheck that you get every week or every two weeks, it is so, it's so easy on your brain. I get a paycheck every two weeks. It's this much. And to quit that and have in your paycheck is you, if you don't perform, you're dead. Mm -hmm. It's scary. So that switch over, um, you just, you have to realize when to do it. It's the most scary thing. It was, it was, Doing that was more scary than hiring people. To have a weekly payroll is very scary, but to quit, because it's a mindset. How money works is just a made up concept. So we think a paycheck or a boss or a company has to pay us money. That is the wrong mindset. And I don't, I don't know if it was done on purpose or a way to control society, which is a little bit silly to talk about, but the mindset of a paycheck is, is control. You're in jail. Hmm. Break free of that concept because as much money as you want, really, honestly, I know it's silly to say, and it's not going to happen tomorrow for you. You can have as much as you want by just making a few decisions and it just happens. Hmm. So I've quit my side job and now it's just me. And at the time I was doing a little bit of basement. I was doing, so again, my, uh, at the time I was, I wasn't, 100% focused on just repair, I was trying to sprinkle in some full basements, full houses. So at that time, this was several years ago, I hired a crew, and this was a bit of a learning curve, and everything you do is going to be a learning curve. You're going to fail terribly. You learn from it. So at the time, I was doing repairs, and that, that was doing great for me, but I was starting to run out of repairs. So I, I felt like I had to take basements on. So I hired a crew, and I started doing basements, but then I started working out all my numbers between workman's comp, insurance, tax, payroll, things like that. I was making like 5% profit. It, was, it wasn't even worth my time to do that. And with repair, we're about 50% margins, which is phenomenal. So I let that team mm -hmm. go and, I, and I, I transformed it into what we have now is just specific. We'll, te we'll tell people that do basements no because we just do the repair because there's more margin there because you have to think business what you can have this great dream. If my dream originally was just basements, the percentage, it's just not there. If I were to scale huge, huge, that makes a business. But this, you know, six people, you can't have a, if the margins are too tight, they're too scary. You have one bad job, it hurts the next five. And that doesn't mean the, you know, there's drywall companies that make tons of money. The, the, the top heads are millionaires because they have the scale. Well, it um, seems like um, the thing to learn from that is knowing when to say no, right? And that applies to anything. It's like totally. when you're trying to do something new, you think I have to say yes to everything. At a certain point, you start to learn 
that there's certain things you should say no to because you realize it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't pay out right. It takes too much time. Um, Beautiful explanation. Another thing you mentioned earlier that I wanted to kind of say is I thought it would kind of hit me is you're talking about getting your paycheck, right? And we When we have a full-time job, we have this illusion of security, mm. but you could be laid off any time. So like anything is only an illusion, right? At, to a certain point. So doing your own thing and making your own money, you have more control, a lot more risk, and it can be scary, but a lot more potential reward, I think. Um, yeah, yeah. And, you, and you're never completely secure because as much as you think your business, the company loves you, like for the bottom line, they'll let you go if they need to. So it's something to keep in mind. This beautiful, and so mo, a, a big part of my career, like eight years, I worked in the food industry and I won't talk about that, but just this one manager told me, and whoever is listening, let this sink in because a business will do this. You, even if you're a high-end executive, I don't care what you are, you're a piece of toilet paper. You take a poop, I've used my toilet paper, and as soon as it's dirty and you don't want to use it anymore, you're thrown away. I don't care how good you think you are in that business, as soon as you're used up, that company will get rid of you. It is that simple. So think that even if your boss is the coolest guy in the world, as soon as you're not useful, they'll, they'll be about this much lenient. You're gone. That is a frightening thing. You turn 70 years old, you're gone. Whatever. Well, job it, it is, it's, it's a reality, right? And it's like, even like you said, you were, you, you, you hired a crew to do full basements. And when you realize this isn't working, it's nothing personal. You exactly. had to, you had to make a business decision, you know? So, so it's not I, to say that's an evil practice. It's just a reality, right? It's just, I mean, capitalism, however you look at that, it's not necessarily just that. It's just how a business runs. Yeah. Business always comes first. It comes first before me. You know, I mean, let's say things are super tight here and there was no money for me to take a paycheck. The business comes first always. Now, that's a little bit on the on the advanced scale of, of business talk, but um, it's interesting. It's just any side hustle you have. You can transform it into that concept. Do you mind if I share another example with you? Of course, dude. Go for it. So this is going to be another example on how you can turn your side hustle into something beautiful. So you might think in your head, all right, so we talked about the nine to five job and how, how I had a side hustle. Let's just say your thing, you needed some cash influx immediately. You can't do this without $1,000, $2,000. Let me give you a great example that I personally did. So there's no excuses. And and, and just we can trans, we, I could give a thousand of examples of the same thing because it all works. Like three years ago, again, this is kind of when I was doing drywall repair and thing, it wasn't five days a week. I had already quit my job, but it wasn't quite full time. I was doing maybe 40 hours, but I like to do 50, 60, 70. So winter came and there was, it was just a really slow winter. So I was going to do snow removal for my community. Huge demand there. I got on Facebook and was talking it up because I proof of concept. The idea is anybody interested? Snow removal. Lots of responses. So what I did, I needed to buy, I got a huge, beautiful snowblower and a basket for my truck so it just easily goes up, up. Not all the way on the on the truck, a basket on the, the hitch. So all of that together was about three grand. This, I didn't have any money. I had, I had just enough money to pay my bills. I probably had five extra dollars. There was no money. How are you going to make three grand to get all this equipment to start the business? Any thoughts quickly in your head? So what I did is I got on the Facebook and said, I am selling season passes for snow removal. Give me $500, literally $500 is what I charge. And I will, every time it snows, I will be at your house and do your snow removal. So I got six people to do that, and they paid me that day. I had three grand in my hand. I went out and bought the equipment. I had the equipment. Now I had to fulfill my commitment. So obviously you can't just be a snake and be a you know a jerk. Um, I had to fill my commitment, but then that material or that equipment was a hundred percent paid for for free for free, which is very interesting. And then I I did a couple more um, season passers because I just wanted a little extra money in my pocket, but then I did all the carts and I would charge $40 a visit. So when it snowed, I would do my season passers because a lawn would take, or a driveway would take 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And I'd work 10 hours a day. And then I would charge $40 for an all the cart. Somebody's like, Oh, Hey, can you do, 
just me for 40 bucks. So I would make tons and tons of money, but that's a small example of how I needed three grand. I think it was a little, it was somewhere in there. I needed three grand today to buy the equipment and my bank had zero dollars in it. Anything you could do that with. Uh, I don't know if it works exactly this way, but video games, pre-sale, why do you think they pre-sale? They pre-sale because they want your money either to satisfy a bank because the bank is like, we need more money in your account, to proof of concept that the game is popular so they can invest more money into the details of the game. Mm -hmm. They do it for that same concept. So anything you want, there's two examples, nine to five, then side hustle where you're making a little at a time to build up the business or pre-sale something to get the money in your account. That idea really just keep re-listening to that it changes your whole mind how money works any amount of money is just like if i wanted ten thousand dollars i could walk out that door make a few phone calls somebody's going to give it to me because I, I would pitch an idea or do something but i would have to follow through obviously yeah. with no money. it's awesome it's just that's what i love about you is the way you think and you uh, outside, not, I don't know how outside the box is. That's just being smart. Simple. I think most people would say, my go-to would be like, I guess I'll get a credit card and then I'll try to, but it's like, actually, no, because right. you're doing two things here. You're like, you're covering the expense, but you're also proving that it's lucrative because if no one said, oh, I'll pay for the season pass, then you're like, this isn't a winning, this is not a winning opportunity because no one, no one wants to do it. So if you could lie to yourself and say, and be lazy or like, you know, want to get to the, the thing and say, I'll just throw it on a credit card. I'll figure it out. I'll be able to make this work. You have to be realistic. So that's awesome. I love this example. And it's, it's a new way to look at it. And this could be applied to any concept that you could say, Hey, let's see if people are interested before I start putting money into this. And then I could use that to finance what I need to get this thing running. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome, dude. That's really cool. Um, I just think that there's a lot to be learned from what you've done. And I mean, you've grown your business. You now have multiple employees. I just saw you post, you're looking for more employees. Mm -hmm. We need another lot, uh, a full technician and a lot tech. And so we're, we're five vans in, in Utah and mm -hmm. here with, I mean, we have the van purchased. We're shipping it up to Idaho Falls, Rexburg area. Because our internal goal as a company, I'm 100% owner, right? And, and well, d don't take on a partner if you can. Just a little side note. Again, that's kind of advanced business. 100% partner or 100% owner. Um, my internal goal for the company is to be in 30 states with at least six trucks in each state. It's kind of that's my awesome. internal goal. Um, but, yeah, I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, that's great. I just think that's great. I just, I just think that uh, there's a lot to be learned from the hustle you have and the uh, ingenuity and the dedication and just like being smart about how we go about these plans. Cause my podcast is all about learning about finances, investing, preparing for retirement. But a big part of that is you need to be able to find ways to bring in money so that you can then do things with that money to grow it. Mm -hmm. So like what, whether it's your own entrepreneurial endeavor, whether it's taking what you have and maximizing it and investing it properly and being disciplined, you know, there's a lot of ways to go about this, but I just found that the more you can bring in, the more you can do, you know what I mean? So it's about finding ways to have, to diversify your income streams and things like that. So I think there's more conversations we could have about mm -hmm. other things you're doing, like I, potentially with investing and stuff. I think that's a whole okay. different conversation, but I know you're big into that too. We, uh, maybe we can do another video of that, but I'm huge into uh, investing, reading the markets. Now, I lose all the time, but I, I win more. And maybe we do a separate video on that because that's a long thing. I do want to say – Yeah, I would love to. Um, so with a business idea, right? I uh, So when, when, when a somebody says, what's an asset? I think our mind thinks an asset's this big thing, this – thousand dollar truck or this ten thousand dollar truck this million dollar house house you know if you want to call that an asset but i call them baby assets right i don't know if we're doing video here but like this pen costs five cents this potentially is a baby asset now this is micro stupid but if i were to buy a stapler or a, or a printer this is an asset because i can make money from this if i go buy a screwdriver that's a baby asset. So like the snowblower, sure, that was three grand. It's a baby asset. But I have a power washer. I have a paint sprayer. I have so – keep buying these little baby assets. It will change your life. Like people talk about um, – I guess uh, – like uh, 
I'm not thinking of the word right now. But anyway, baby assets are so important. I know that was a little off what we were talking about, but I just really want to impress on people. If you keep building these assets, even little baby ones, you're, you're and debt free, it's going to change your life. Yeah, I think that just as an example, I have a, this photography business, a real estate photography business. And mm-hmm. there was like, I just felt like some people had asked me, do you do aerial stuff? And it's usually people that aren't like clients. They're just like, oh, do you do aerial? Because it's kind of exciting and interesting mm-hmm. with these new drones are so awesome, the technology. And I just be like, nah, I just don't think there's enough. To, there's no demand for it. No one's ever asking for it. And uh, and then finally, I had a couple clients need aerial. So I ended up hiring a separate person to do it for me. And and then I realized at a certain point, like I need this asset. Did you buy, did you buy the I drone? I buying a really nice drone. Beautiful. You know, it was a $1,600 investment, but I just had this feeling and I started reaching out to my clients and I didn't do it exactly how you did it. There's some things I would do differently <laughs> than what I did, but ultimately it was the right move because it's more than paid for it over and over again. You know what I mean? Like I've, mm-hmm. I pretty much almost always do arrows on every shoot. I was able to upsell my clients, reach out to them. Hey, all these clients I had that had never asked me about aerial photography i said hey i have a drone now this is what i'm i can for this much more and they're like let's do it let's do it on every shoot and i'm like who would have thought so yeah having these assets things that you can leverage and give more value and do something with is is huge and every time i've invested in better equipment like a new camera new lighting new things it was scary but Mm -hmm. i ended up doing better work and being able to charge more because i'm at a higher level and i've gained and uh, it's it's paid for itself. So yeah, investing in yourself and your business pays off, especially if you do it right. You know, so that's that, awesome. That drone example, so beautiful. And it sounds like you already got it and everything. But mm-hmm. if you, the listener, if you're like, oh, I need a drone, I the same concept with the snowblower. Find four. I don't know how much a shoot is for for that. Like I, I have no idea. So, but, but find one customer or ten customers until that drone is for free. You collect their money if you need cash right now. If you have the money to buy it, like in your account, buy it. But you have the customers on the side to replenish that money in a week or whatever it takes. Yes. Um, so then it's still free. But if you need the money up front, you can do the pre-sale. But I yeah. love, love that example because now you have, I mean, I don't know how long drones last, a couple years, 10, 20 years, who knows. Hmm. You have that asset sitting in your garage or wherever that can forever make you money. It's, it's so beautiful to just change your mindset on how money works because it's free as much yeah. as you want. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So for me, it's – and I think this this has been good. I think we can kind of wrap this up. But, man, it's been so awesome. And for me, it's that's where I'm at, though, with this company. It's like I don't want to be the one doing all the photo shoots. I don't want to be editing all the photos. I want to grow it. So that's kind of the next oh. phase for me. And it's kind of scary because I don't feel like I have enough – I haven't pushed to get – a lot because I do it in the evenings after I do my job. And mm-hmm. I'm not, to be honest, I'm not interested in doing this full time. I don't want to stop really my career. I just want to have this thing grow kind of and not have to do everything myself. So that's kind of where I'm at. So I would like to, I mean, I, I don't know, maybe we talk, not today, but maybe we talk for five hours and I really, there's a lot of value. So for you to switch, so you just talked, you want to take it because right now I'm sitting here eating donuts, right? Yes. And there is five guys on the field making me money, and I'm just relaxing. Yes, that's kind of interesting to me. <laughs> so, and really, I could go home and take a nap, and I'm yeah. still making a ton of money. So, your concept, and really, we could do a video on this that switch over. So, I, I, I kind of in detail talked about the nine to five switching to the your side job, but switching from just you to employees is very scary. Not as scary as the first switch, which I think will help you mentally. If you can quit your nine to five and you've done your side hustle and that's your full time gig, that's more scary than hiring people. Now yeah. sure, you need to think do things legit with payroll, workman's comp, all that beautiful stuff. It's less scary. So I'd love mm. to chat with you either in private or another video or something. Um, well, I think it'd be cool to do a separate conversation sometime and let's just talk through it, like what I'm trying to do with this business and like ways that I could maybe get there because, um, yeah, I think it'd be good. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm a talker, so I... No, it. this is great. I, I love <laughs> it. So thank you for joining me. And if anyone you know listening to this has things they want to add to the conversation, that they have questions, 
or something they want to go further into or even a separate topic they'd be curious about me getting into or even Samson from his perspective, um, you can email me at nobettertime.podcast at gmail.com. And it sounds like I'll be having you back, Samson. And this has been incredibly yeah. enjoyable. And thanks so much, man. Uh-huh. Okay.